I felt like I got overconfident because I hadn't seen the seizures in a while and I thought that they might be behind me now. And June came fast and furious and reminded me that these conditions that we experience are unpredictable. Hello beautiful butterflies and welcome back to Naturally Graceful. If this is your first time, I'm Nina. I'm going to be giving you an update on my non-epileptic seizures. There are those of you who have contacted me and let me know that by me putting my video out there talking about my experience that you feel seen, that you feel less alone, um, knowing that there's someone else out there who's going through something that you're going through. I'd love to hear from those of you in the comments how long you've been dealing with this condition if you have it or if you um, know of someone in your family who has it and also if you find that this year with all that it has been has flared up your condition that you have I'd love to know in the comments so if you haven't seen my other videos and you would like to know more about exactly what non-epileptic seizures are and how it is that I experience them I'm going to leave a link in the description so you can check that out and get some more information uh, in this video I'm going to be talking to you about what's been happening since the last video I did which is about nine months ago so starting in the beginning of the year, I was doing really well. I wasn't having any seizures. I actually made it from January to June, no seizures. And I was feeling very hopeful. Because of the seizure condition that I have, my license was suspended, so I was not able to drive. So I haven't driven, it's been a year since I've been able to drive, which has been an adjustment. Um, especially when my son was in school pre-COVID and um, I was walking to go and pick him up and get rides from um, different friends and then this year happened and so my husband has been home working from home so I have to say that has been very helpful um, because anywhere that we needed to go he was there to be able to take us. Someone else had um, reached out to me and asked me do you feel like a burden because you are dependent on others so much? And I will say that there are times that I do feel that way, even, you know, even with my own family and those who I know love me and want to help. It can be hard to be so dependent on others for a lot of things, especially when you're not used to asking for help and you're used to doing a lot of things on your own. But I will say I'm very, very thankful for my husband. He's been, I think that has actually made this year easier to deal with. The fact that he's been home, helping to share the load and it hasn't been um, so much upon me. So what happened earlier this year, I felt like I got overconfident because I hadn't seen the seizures in a while and I thought that they might be behind me now. And June came fast and furious and reminded me that these conditions that we experience are unpredictable. And so I had um, more than one seizure in June. I had in July, I had in August. And I think in September there was a little bit of a reprieve. And then I was recovering. Um, the summer was quite a downer for me. I, I felt burnt out. Um, you know, I have been teaching my son at home, uh, which has been amazing, by the way. Uh, it went much better than I thought. He's doing really well. And that actually helped me to decide to homeschool him, which will be a whole nother video. And I underestimated how much all of that was along with content creation and again I was taking advantage of all the energy that I had and I was like all right let's do this and June came and I had no choice but to take a rest because not only did I experience the seizures again but I also was having a flare-up with my fibromyalgia which um, just left me feeling like very fatigued in pain and just not in the best moods this past summer. And usually in the summertime, you feel like you, you get, you know, more happy because the sun is out, it's warmer. Um, but it was a really low key summer because I was trying to recover from earlier in the year. 
And honestly, I will tell you something, and I've mentioned this in other videos, my chronic conditions have a lot to teach me. They also grow me in ways that are not always comfortable, but they do have a lot to teach me. And so this particular flare up that I had this past summer taught me to not be overconfident. It taught me the importance of the word sustainability. Um, not just to go with things because I feel the energy, but continue to do things at a pace that I can sustain. And what the summer months of burnout taught me is I was really overprotective with my rest as far as physical activity. It's important to rest. Rest is important when you have a chronic condition and rest is productive. You don't always have to be going and doing something in order to um, to feel good or to feel productive. However, something that was missing that the fall taught me, I wasn't charging myself back up. So I was pretty much running on low power mode. It I, I think of my phone and when it tells you like, oh, you're getting to like 10%, you know, it's going to be time. Do you want us to go into low power mode? And low power mode is basically to try and maintain the little bit amount of battery that you have, right? So it's not going to work as hard as it usually does so it doesn't drain quickly. So I was in low power mode resting. But at the end of the day, your phone can't last on low power mode for a long time. You have to plug it in and you need to recharge it up. And so what I was missing was doing things that gave me energy. So starting in October, I started walking. Walking was like the easiest thing to do. And to be, let me know in the comments if I'm alone, but many of us may have gained the quarantine 15 or maybe a little bit more than that. But I was overweight. I could feel in my body, especially from being so sedentary over the summer and not moving that much and um, not getting enough activity. I just felt it in all of my body. And I went and got a uh, checkup and, you know, blood work. And of course, they're like, you know, pre-diabetes, you know, your, your blood pressure is a bit borderline, cholesterol, all those things. And so I had a bit of a wake up call. I turned 39 in the summer and I feel like when I turned 39, there was this shift in my body, literally, like where I could sense that if I didn't get a hold of things, you know, it's just going to start going downhill. So I wanted to get a bit more active. You know, walking is like the easiest thing to do. I will say starting in October was like really smart. <laughs> now that I've started and it's going so well, I wish I, of course, took advantage of all the time before that. But October was like a really good temperature wise. The summer sometimes is really hot and I feel exhausted. You know, the drain from the heat of the summer the cold is really cold, you know, your joints and all of that. Starting in October, because fall is my favorite season of the year, looking at the fall foliage, like I said, milder temperatures, it was the perfect month to start my walking habit. I also wanted to walk to help my son to release a lot of energy that he has, being a very energetic five-year-old. What I realized also that I needed to do that the walking helped is release the pent-up anxiety. So I I may not have as much physical energy as my five-year-old. However, I found that I had a lot of mental energy that was going on. Anxiety, worrying, um, you know, just all the things. And when I walked, I felt, I felt like they, you know, all of that stress was able to be released. I mean, exercise is a good um, stress reliever. They say it's the most underutilized antidepressant. And that in no way is to minimize um, what other people go through when it comes to mental illness. September, October, no seizures. So I was like, okay, good. We're starting the um, clock back up again. Maybe we could get another six months in. And this month, November, um, I was reminded again that no, it is not behind you. And so I will admit, especially because I started my walking habit and I was feeling good, I was losing some weight, I've lost eight pounds so far, I've lost some inches off my waist, I feel stronger in my body. 
So I was just like, oh, this is good. But I have four within a seven day period. I, I will admit to you at first I felt like I failed or not that I failed. I felt like, what's the point? <laughs> I was like, okay, I'm walking, I'm doing all these things and this is still happening. Like, why? And if you have moments like that, even though you know all the things, please be compassionate with yourself. Allow those thoughts to come and go as quickly as they came. And again, that was the beauty of this walking habit. Um, now the days that I had episodes, I wasn't able to walk. Actually, what's interesting, the days, the days that I had episodes, I had walked earlier in the day. So I definitely learned walking early <laughs> was helpful to, um, for me to get that activity in there. Another exercise besides walking that was like really a good stress reliever was dancing. Just put on my favorite jams and just dance and like, man, the, the sweat came and you know, the calories burned, but it was fun. And I just felt like I was able to, again, just release a lot of anxiety and just <sighs> pent up feelings of just 2020. The lesson um, that I learned this month from having a good nice month of no seizures and then it's back and then like four in such a short amount of time is that I'm getting there I'm doing something good I'm getting a little bit more active which is great for my health but it doesn't mean it's a cure it helped me to adjust my expectations and to realize that even if I exercise and I'm I'm getting more active and they still happen it still is better I mean obviously for other reasons for my um, blood sugar for my blood pressure for my cholesterol for my mental health just from from my mental health alone walking is an amazing thing so I had to not get into this little like narrow lens that I had just looking on oh my gosh it's four and I can't believe it and just focus on all the good things that have happened. So I want to encourage you if you have been doing good things for yourself or things have been going well and you have a setback, don't let the setback make you forget all the progress that you've made so far. Also, if your progress is slower than you would like, please remember that progress is still progress, no matter if it's slow or not. That's something that I definitely learned from this. I'm just going to be continuing to show myself love by exercising it's something about the consistency of committing to the decision to be active it's building resilience when i had the seizures they did leave me out and on those days that i had the seizures i still was active i may not have went outside and did my walk like i usually do but i did something the 80 20 rule was really helpful I rested 80% of the time and 20% I walked or like, you know, walked around the house. I do have an Apple Watch, which is like another game changer. I got it in October. Um, so it really helped me to track, you know, my activity to help me to be um, less sedentary. And so I would lay in the bed and I rested and then I would get up and, and move around for like two minutes and then go back and lay down. You know, so I have a podcast, if you didn't know, um, Graceful Conversations. And in that podcast, I'm going to link it in the description. I share three different uh, compassionate reminders to keep in mind when you are making goals for yourself that I'd love for you to listen to. You know, things that helped me along the way when I had setbacks like I did with this. So. I am not on any medication. Some have asked about that. I make a lot of lifestyle choices um, to be able to help me to manage these non-epileptic seizures. They also don't necessarily have medication for this because it's not epileptic in its origin. And that's fine with me because I, I'm not anti-medication, but that's like a last resort for me because I have been on medication before and there's so many side effects that I experienced that turned me off uh, to it. My diet, I've been trying to keep mindful of getting rest, getting enough sleep, I'm still working on that, especially with our schedules being all over the place. But I will say that exercise has built some kind of strength in me to be able to be resilient 
uh, to deal with this, especially mentally. Here's something I want you to remember. When you're having a flare up or a setback with your health, your seizures, fibromyalgia, whatever condition it is that you're dealing with, if you had a good period of time where things were going well, try and relish in that during your flare ups. Because sometimes what I made the mistake of doing is minimizing the six months where I went without seizures and just focused on, oh, it's back again, it's not going to leave. I was able to recommit to surrendering to what the reality is that it's happened, it's here, and learn to accept that that is a part of my reality. They're unpredictable. I don't know if this happens to you because of having chronic conditions. You're always thinking about what caused it, what did I do, what can I do differently. And sometimes you can do all the things right and it still happens. So what I've learned is to not discard or minimize the time where things were going well because that is something to celebrate. And even if that means that maybe it takes a couple of years of me being consistent with my health and lifestyle choices for these seizures to go into remission longer, if we can stretch the time between each flare up, that's a, something to celebrate too. You have to try and find something to hold on to uh, so that it doesn't make us do go down that dark rabbit hole. Another thing that I am learning to appreciate about flare ups and setbacks is they could be alarms letting me know where I've gotten off track. Like earlier this year, um, I learned to not be overconfident. Like I said, I learned the importance of sustainability and um, going at a pace that I can keep up with. And it also reminded me that yes, you're doing good with the rest, but we need to also add things to give me energy. And I have heard the importance of exercise a long time, just as I'm sure you have. But it's not until I actually started putting it into practice that I realized, oh my goodness, being sedentary does not help. If you have issues with um, you know, joint pain, muscle pain, all these different things, exercise helps to increase blood circulation. And our blood is transportation for oxygen and nutrients to get to different areas of our body. And when we sit still, it's just pooling. It's not getting to where it needs to go to. We need uh, lubrication for our joints and things like that. If you're not able to do the things that I'm speaking of, please uh, don't feel bad. I want you to remember not to allow what you can't do to stop you from doing what you can. In this blog post, I mentioned a couple of workouts that I found on YouTube that I love that are low impact. I didn't do this video so that you can copy exactly what I do. I'm just hoping that by the end of it, you're encouraged to do something active. If that means walking to your mailbox, if that means um, walking up a couple of stairs, if that means, you know, just doing a little bit more activity than you usually do, stay in your bed 80% of the time, sit in a chair for 20% of the time. You know your circumstances better than anyone, but the importance of trying to move somehow. If um, another thing I realized is I did lose some weight um, so far, and I am on a good start, but this is something that's a marathon. It's not a sprint. So taking care of my health and exercising and being active, I'm still, I'm not even three months in. And I remember seeing somewhere that it takes 21 days to start a habit, but three months to kind of get it locked in. And so I still have a good amount of weight that I need to lose. And I learned that, you know, being overweight can affect my hormones and things like that because my, my hormones, I do find affect my seizures. So um, that's something if you're a female and you experience non-epileptic seizures um, and you notice it happens around your cycle, that might be something, um, you know, to think about. I'm like, okay, Nina, you lost some weight. Yay, that's great. That is something to celebrate, but you still have a little ways to go. So be realistic with what you're expecting to happen. Just because you started walking and you're starting to feel good, that doesn't mean that you're like over the hill. I can't necessarily just look at it to exercise to stop the seizures. If I think about it for my overall health, then that'll help me to continue with it for the long haul. And um, I'll give you guys an update 
once I reach that weight goal that I'm thinking of um, as far as my health is concerned and we'll see if that affects the seizures or not also. Um, when I first started experiencing my seizures I wasn't overweight so I don't think that that's what the cause is um, but I think it definitely will help just my health in general um, you know to lose some weight and like I said the mental health benefits are you know bar none really and uh, maybe some side effects could be uh, sore <laughs> I feel sore because my body's like well what's going on here <laughs> you know um, but I rather take that than uh, you know other side effects that I've experienced um, before but again if you are taking something and you are finding that it's helping I am not giving medical professional advice or anything like that. I'm just talking about what works for me um, and my personal experience. And even if you are on medication, it is important to exercise. Of course, talk to your doctor first, um, you know, all those things. Um, I'm just sharing my experience with you guys again, because at the end of the day, I want you to know that you're not alone. It's important to take it a day at a time. If it's unpredictable, if it feels heavy and it's a lot, that's normal. But do what you can to take care of yourself, not just in the resting. If you have done like me, been a little bit too protective with rest, it's also important to recharge and to give ourselves things that give us energy. So activity as well as um, compassionate thoughts and um, also good food you know, to help give you the energy you need, water, drink of water, hydrating yourself, um, all these basic things that we know. But when you actually put it into practice, I tell you, I get why they say that a lot. That is my update, guys. I thank you guys so much for listening to my story and helping me to see the power it is in sharing your story. Um, because maybe there might be some of you who've, who have not commented who have not told me, but you're watching this and just knowing that you're watching it and knowing you're not alone makes me feel great. Uh, so if you have any questions, definitely leave that in the comments. And I look forward to seeing you guys on the next update. Remember to be compassionate to yourself and that slow progress is still progress. And don't let what you can't do stop you from doing what you can. See you on the next video. Bye.